or at least a close approximation. I called Eddie Ditko first. He came over that night, happy to listen to my account of the events in the maintenance shed. He grinned a lot while I talked, and said that he could guarantee a bottom half of the front page position for the story. When Eddie was gone, I called Tracy Manus, who put me in touch with Lyle Stodge at 20 minutes after 10. Lyle was only too happy to accept my offer of an interview. I phoned every person who had interviewed me in print, radio, or television, or who had wanted to interview me. I spent most of the night and part of the next morning on the phone, and everybody was happy to talk to me. At 12 minutes after 3, I parked in a red zone outside Jonathan Green's Sunset Boulevard building and went inside. I shoved past the receptionist and ran up the stairs and barged past the army of clerks and assistants and minions. The inside news videographer and his sound technician were talking to a slim woman by the coffee machine when I went past. I grabbed him by the arm and pulled him along. You're going to love this. I kicked open the door to Jonathan's office and found Jonathan Green on the phone. The two lesser attorneys were with him. Green said, I'm calling the police. I pulled the phone out of his hands and tossed it aside. I said, here's the bad news, Jonathan. 